there, friends. I'm here talking about component three for the initial certification process for the National Board and specifically around your written commentary question that says what specific approaches, strategies, techniques, or activities did you use to promote active student engagement in the lesson? Cite specific examples from the video recording. So that is a mouthful. And some people are like, what do I have to do? All of these? Like, what? It, what's the difference? What's the difference in approaches and strategies and techniques and activities? Aren't they the same thing? All right, so I'm here to say that semantics are often the underwritten elephant in the room for the national board process, right? You don't want to say it, but you're like, oh, what do they mean? Why do they have to use words I don't understand? Or why do they have to mix up all these words that seem the same and make me think I don't know something? Um, but so the short answer here is, is, Yes, in a way, a specific approach and a strategy, they could be very much the same. So a, an approach could be inquiry and a strategy could be inquiry. Yeah, they could be. Or you can look at it in a way like, okay, my approach is an inquiry-based lesson and my strategy is open-ended questions or a lab and then you're like, wait, but a lab, Tracy, is an activity. Yeah, okay, I can agree. The lab could be the activity. And a technique in the lab could be the way the students participate in it with roles or, um, you know, with a common like research question. So there really isn't a right or wrong answer here. What is the right answer is, that you are diving deep and specific enough not to just say, it's an inquiry lesson, bam, that's it. What does that mean? You know, when you break down inquiry and you look at the inquiry cycle, what does that mean? So I'm going to share my screen. I, um, I have a course on component three that helps you work through and build your portfolio by studying the National Board Standards and um, really getting to know the rubric because you have to begin with the end in mind with the rubric. And what I'm about to show you is the way my brain breaks down the C3 process for you if you're a part of the course. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I would love for you to come over to tracybryantstuckey.com and check out the Component 3 course that I offer. It's always open enrollment for it. And I think that you would have fun through it and it would really break things down in a way that that might make a little better sense than what this does now. But but anyway, let me share my screen and kind of show you. I wanted just to give you a preface on where these documents came from that I'm about to share with you. All right, so this is ECGEN, but this is, what is this? Writing about planning. Okay, we're not in the writing about planning. Um, we are in the analysis and reflection. All right, again, I'm in... EC Gen just because, but I have this for, for everybody. And let me go down to that. Okay, this is that question right here. Let's make it up into a slideshow. All right, so this page in the SWART book is just dealing with video one. And notice how I've broken this up into quadrants. And I've got a time stamp here. So I believe that it's super important that you go into your video. Let's say your video is 40 minutes long. You go into your video and you look for these types of things. Now, first of all, I teach you to plan for this before you even video. But if you've already videoed, you're now like, what's the best 15 minutes? You need to look for specific approaches, strategies, techniques, and activities. Okay? So, so you're going to look and say, all right, at timestamp, whatever, I see these particular things. And, oh, I believe this is an approach. This is a strategy. This is a technique or an activity. You don't have to have them. Oh, wait, I think I did it for video two for whatever reason. Okay, so look at how I've done this. Now, I'm just throwing out examples. These things don't necessarily, they haven't come from us, somebody's video or anything like that. It's just me thinking out loud what I would say specific approaches might be. Teacher-centered, 
could be an approach in my mind. Inquiry, student-centered and collaborative. They, they seem to go together for me. Flipped classroom, that's an approach. Again, Tracy's fine. This is an approach. All right, now when I thought of strategies, like a, a teacher-centered approach for me oftentimes looks like students summarizing and note-taking as a strategy. And they also might be doing graphic organizers with sticky notes as a technique. And they may also be doing like Edpuzzle, a gamification for Edpuzzle or Kahoot. So I took that teacher-centered all the way across the board. Still, those students are engaged in it. So I, because I'm looking for active student engagement here. See, that's the other part of this question, active student engagement. And so this teacher-centered part, it's it's going to be the teacher talking. They're going to be gaining information. What what kind of active student engagement are they going to be doing there? It's active listening to the teacher, then these are the things that are really going to get them engaged, even with a teacher-centered approach. Um, inquiry, you might give time for thinking, that might be a technique, and then you might have a graffiti wall where they're moving around and, and really flowing through the inquiry cycle with um, thinking about things and, and um, putting them up on a graffiti wall. So uh, another one with student-centered and collaboration, a strategy might be concept mapping. So the kids are actively engaged by concept mapping, whatever it is that you've given them to start to study. Think about the um, periodic table, for example, okay? Don't tell them what the elements are. Don't tell them how it fits together on the table. Don't get them to memorize the periodic table. Have them look at the element cards and map them out into groups. Like where would they go? Who fits with who? And then inevitably by the end, they're going to put that periodic table together by themselves. Just like they'll do that with a dichotomous key. They'll do that with understanding pi. You don't have to tell them everything. They can figure it out on their own. Um, and then my, my final example was flipped classroom. And they would they might be given a scenario to do problem solving around a scenario. That might be a strategy. And then techniques were could have been Flipgrid and Padlet that were used inside of it. And some people would say, but Tracy, that's an activity. It, either or, I don't care. Uh, the assessor is really not going to be sitting there going, wait, wait, that's a technique. And she called it or he called it an activity. That mm -mm, I don't agree with this. No, they're not looking at that. They're looking at you matching your approaches, strategies, techniques, or activities to active engagement. Where are students actively engaged in this lesson and how? How are they actively engaged? Okay, so notice that all the boxes aren't filled. That's fine. It's what you're seeing. And then what we'll notice is we'll notice like where are they most engaged? If we wanna answer this question, which also matches one of the bullet points in the um, in it, which I, I teach you how the bullet points align to the questions, I match them for you inside of the course, then you will, you'll say, oh my gosh, my best 15 minutes is this 15 minutes and not this one. You might've thought otherwise. So that's really the power in understanding that question. I hope this helps you break it down and I appreciate you continuing to watch me on this channel. Talk to you soon. Bye now.